Hello, this is uh, Elliot from Ailstone, and this is a rundown of the arrangement and the production of the acoustic cover of Wellerman, the Sea Shanty, that we are releasing alongside our Live in Tilburg DVD. Uh, so yeah, the story behind this is uh, Napalm Records asked us for some bonus material for to go along with the DVD and the box set. Uh, and because we all live different countries and Chris especially is thousands of miles away living in America um, we decided to just quickly throw an acoustic cover together uh, and around about that time the uh, sea shanty Wellerman was uh, popular on the internet for some reason so we decided we'd join in the meme brigade and do the same thing so uh, yeah to start with Chris sent me uh, his vocals that he had recorded along with a just a guide piano track just basic chords so that we'd have some idea of the key and everything so yeah this is what I got from Chris he sent me uh, one guide piano track and then two tracks of vocals so this is the chorus that we're going to focus on today so let's give it a listen Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum one when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. So yeah, starting with that, uh, we figured out what key the song was going to be in. Uh, and so I, instead of the piano, I uh, played the, pretty much the same thing on acoustic guitar, just basic campfire chords. Um, yeah, so it was just uh, it was a pretty cheap Fender acoustic guitar that I have, just mic'd it up with a Neumann TLM 103 very basic recording setup and we have a EQ curve just to get rid of some of the uh, low end messy stuff and a bit of the high end to leave some room for the vocals and the accordions and all that sort of thing some pretty basic compression uh, using the CLA 2A uh, compressor and then some uh, multiband compression just to remove some of the clanky stuff around the high mids uh, to leave more space for the more melodic instruments. So the yeah the acoustic guitar sound like this, and I'll just remove that EQ so you can hear the difference. So this is with the EQ off. a lot of muddy low-end uh, stuff that we don't really want in there yep and along with that there is a in the middle there is a like a lead line on acoustic guitar which sounds like this uh, and for this I actually added a pitch shift set to an octave lower with about a 30% blend with the original signal to kind of give a like a fake 12 string sound. So this is the original recording. And then with the pitch shift added, it just kind of sounds like a double, an octave lower. So like, yeah, pretty quick cheat way of doing a 12 string sound. Next, uh, let's look at the bass, which is very simple kind of pretty classic Ailstorm kind of style bass line, just to that umpire thing. It's quite similar to the bass in a lot of our normal songs. Uh, and for this I use just the Contact Factory Library double bass solo patch on Pizzicato. I think it's just on all the standard settings but with the reverb turned off. Uh, and then as far as processing there is the uh, CLA bass plugin, which just kind of adds some sort of um, cabinet emulation along with a bit of sub bass EQ, uh, some compression, uh, and especially this pitch shift I really like because it adds a bit of width, which I don't usually want on a bass. You usually want the bass to be very focused down the center, but for this kind of organic uh, acoustic thing, it's quite nice to have a bit of space in the in the bass. So yeah, this is with it switched off. It's very central. And that's with the chorus uh, added. Again, some kind of multiband compression across the whole thing, really, just to tame all the resonances in the double bass, because it's an acoustic instrument, so there's quite a lot of resonance. 
Uh, yep, yeah, and then some EQ just to take a lot of stuff out of the middle to leave a lot more space for the uh, for the other instruments and then a, a low pass, quite standard. The percussion, if we listen to that, for just for this chorus, for example, the percussion. Yeah, there's quite a lot of things going on here. So the bass, just a normal bass drum, kick drum. This is actually the um, the modern and massive uh, sample library by Get Good Drums. This is just the normal, uh, the default kick drum. Uh, but I've got quite a extreme EQ curve on this, removing almost all of the frequencies, to be honest. Just a lot of very low end thump and then a little bit of presence in the high mids. If we take that off, you'll hear what the kick drum originally sounds like. Much more like a normal kick drum, really. And then that's with the EQ. And then we have the uh, pull textile compressor, which just adds some uh, adds some very low frequencies at 20 hertz, and then some 4K as well. Everyone's favorite frequency. Pretty standard bass drum sound. And uh, then we have a snare drum, which is again, I think, from the Contact Factory library. Just the orchestral snare drum from their uh, uh, standard collection. Um, yeah, and some EQ, taking out some low mids and then a bit of a boost around the 100 hertz mark just to add some of that like uh, chest, uh, you know, that frequency that you sort of f start to feel rather than hear. So here's the bass drum and the snare. And then there is a, a shaker, just like on the offbeat. And that's again from the Contact Factory Library. That's just the African Shakers selection. It just kind of sounds like a maraca, basically. And I have that panned to the left 50%, and then that is sent to another track, which is panned 50% to the right, so it's spread out a bit. And the right one has a minus 12 millisecond delay, so it just kind of sounds a little bit different and just helps to spread out in the uh, stereo field. And then the, the cool thing in this section is this... Uh, kind of uh, syncopated uh, drumming sound. And actually that is taken from the uh, harmonium, which we're gonna listen to in a minute, but I realized that the uh, the harmonium uh, sound I'm using has this key noise uh, control so what I decided to do was um, I have one track with the key noise and one track without and then I subtracted the without from the one that has it to be left with the uh, only the noise so if I put this track out of phase what we're left with is only that key noise which is uh, adds like a nice uh, syncopated percussion sounds a bit like a baran, like the Irish uh, drum thingy. So yeah, if we listen to the percussion all together. Yeah, and of course there's some claps that I just downloaded, a basic clap sample from the internet. Uh, I could have recorded it myself, but recording claps always sounds really bad, so I just downloaded some. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Now if we move on to the accordion section, there's actually three going on here. So to start with, we have a, just a basic accordion playing like a, a two note drone chord thing. And that's panned all the way to the, no, it's panned 68% to the right. Just separate it a bit. And then along with that, panned even further to the right, we have a melodeon just playing this very staccato offbeat thing. So those two together is kind of like a two-handed accordion player playing the offbeat and a drone. And then on the other side of the stereo field, we have this harmonium, uh, which I was talking about before, which sounds like this. 
And the MIDI from this uh, track is actually feeding that key noise thing that I was speaking about before. Uh, so yeah, this MIDI is being sent to this track. And that's what's driving that uh, key noise. Which is pretty cool, because it means I only have to put the MIDI in for this section once, and then all the other tracks that need it uh, just get sent it. Which is uh, quite an efficient way of working. So yeah, if we listen to the, uh, what do we have so far? The lead acoustic guitar, acoustic chords, bass, accordions, and uh, the percussion, that sounds like this. Uh, yeah, and then if we move on to the vocals, first we have uh, Chris's vocal. So he sent me two tracks for the chorus. One is like the main lead vocal, and then the second one is just a double to try and you know thicken it, make it sound a bit bigger in the choruses. So that sounds like this. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. And yeah, if we look at the processing on this track, it's uh, basic high pass and low pass. I'm just removing a bit of 200 hertz to get rid of some of the woolly frequencies, and then we have. Uh, this somewhere around almost at 2k i guess just removing some frequency i didn't like deessa and then i have two compressors uh both reasonably gentle but i rather than use one heavy compressor i'm feeding one into another one which gives it a bit more of a transparent sound because it's an acoustic track so we don't want it to sound like too pumping or too uh yeah too heavy really and then for the uh, for the doubled vocal for the chorus, I'm doing the similar thing that I was doing with the shaker, which is panning one of them left and then feeding that into another track, which is panned 100% right. And then again, I've just got uh, an 11 millisecond delay just to kind of offset it a little bit, uh, which is called the Haas effect. It just spreads things out a bit and makes things sound wider than they really are. Uh, yeah, same EQ, same DSA, and just a single compressor on this one because it's a bit lower in the mix. So yeah, Chris's vocals with the one down the centre and then the ones that are spread out left and right sound like this. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done we'll take our leave and go. No room. Yeah, and then if we move on to my vocals, since I had to do all the rest of the vocals, it was just something me and Chris very quickly worked on. Uh, what do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six tracks. So because this had become such a big meme somehow on the internet, uh, YouTube was really helpful in giving uh, all the separated parts for the vocal harmonies for this, so I just followed those. It was very easy to do, very easy to copy that, what somebody else had already done. So yeah, there's a, there's a there was like a, a bass part, which is uh, this. Soon may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue in is done, we'll take our leave and go. Soon may. And I guess that must be a similar uh, chain to Chris's voice. Yeah, we have a standard gate, EQ, removing a lot of the high end because this is the bass part. Deessa and some of that standard uh, 2A compression. Um, and then there's a baritone part, so if I mix that in together with the bass, it sounds like this. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One I think most of the signal chain is the same here, except I've got a lot more high end in this part. And again, that kind of problem frequency that I had the same thing in Chris's voice. Stop all those horrible frequencies stacking up. Then the alto part. May the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue in is done, we'll take our leave and go. Do yeah, very similar in cue curb on this. To bring us sugar and tea and rum. And then there's actually a th fourth part, which is the bass, which is way lower than I can really sing. So I asked one of my friends, Steve, to uh, sing this for me, and he had just moved house that day, didn't have any of his recording stuff set up. So I said, it's fine, just sing it into your phone. I'll just save it from WhatsApp, we'll put it in, nobody will be able to tell the difference. So, yeah. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. 
and I've just put a little bit of the uh, resonance bass on there just to add a bit more of the low end. And yeah, on its own, probably doesn't sound that good. It's not very well recorded because it's just sang into a cell phone. But if you mix it in with the rest of the... One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Doom, may the wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. No doom. Yep, sounds perfectly fine. Uh, just shows you that sometimes you don't really have to worry about stuff as long as it sounds good in the mix. It's fine. Uh, and I believe that may be everything, so let's listen to the whole thing. I'll just have a look at my uh, signal chain on the master bus as well. If I just turn everything off and then we'll turn it all on in sequence. So here it is to start with. And then this is the EQ curve for the master bus. I'm just getting rid of some 200 hertz, some of that high 3, 4K stuff and a bit of a scoop from the middle. Then adding more presence because I felt like, especially with the acoustic guitars, it needed a bit more shine on top. So it doesn't make that much difference, but it just cleans things up a bit. And then we have a bus compressor. Just because there's a lot of spiky stuff in the percussion and a lot, of, especially the claps, there's a lot of uh, peaks that kind of come out of nowhere. So that's just kind of tickling those off. It's only about two or three dBs of compression. And then we have the Kazrog True Iron. I'll turn that off. So it doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it's just like a transformer emulation that adds a bit of warmth and this crush uh, knob just kind of uh, saturates everything a little bit. And then another instance of the pull tech compression. You can really hear the difference in the low end with this one. I'll switch it off. And switch it on. Yeah, we're adding a little bit of presence at 16k. Well, that's very high actually. And then uh, some 30 hertz. Just to fill out the low end a lot. And then that's where I would stop, really, because uh, it, this is just only going to be released on vinyl, or that's what we thought it would only be released on vinyl. So you don't really want to do too much extreme limiting and uh, loudness for vinyl, because the needle's just going to fall off the record if you do that. So uh, that's pretty much where I would leave it. But then I do have uh, an instance of Isotope Ozone with the maximizer just for a 6 dB uh, limiting, uh, which just kind of makes it louder. So if this was going to end up on digital streaming or something, you know, or if I just wanted to listen to my, it myself, uh, it just sounded a bit more commercial loudness to it. Switch it off. Yeah, as you can hear, it just makes it louder. Nothing else to it, really. And yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the song and the other song that we did, Chicken on a Raft, the other acoustic song. Uh, it was pretty fun. Napalm asked us to provide some bonus songs, and obviously that was the best we could do, given that there's a major disaster going on in the world right now. But we're pretty happy with it. Sounds pretty good. Hope you enjoyed it.